Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. I'm really excited about this one because in one of the last episodes we put up, I showed you that we had actually found a few boxes full of treasure and the two safes that were, um, I was told had been in the house. We ended up getting those and we're gonna go through all that, but we're gonna do it in uh, three videos. So the first video, we're gonna be going through a box and um, it was all kind of tucked together and I believe there's gonna be good stuff in it. I, Peeked in one of the boxes, but I didn't go all the way through. Have not even been in this one. So uh, together with Melissa. Hello. Uh, we are going to, oh, I should probably say that there's pumpkins on our table because when we're filming this, it's the day before Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> we don't usually have like uh, pumpkins and spider webs all over the house. Yeah, sure. And bat, look, there's bats up on the window. Not on purpose anyways. Yeah, but uh, we have a tripod set up. and you, Oh, Alex is finally using a tripod. Yes, I'm using a tripod, uh, at least for part of it. Um, we're going to go through this box and see what treasures are inside. I did the zoom on the camera. Woo! So let's get into it. Let's see what we find. Melissa is off camera to my right over there. Um, and I am camera left and together. Look, both hands. Did you know I had another hand? That's what the camera holding hand looks like. I could have had a claw for all you know. Okay, let's open this up. First thing, what do we do, binder or tin? Well, I mean, I think we should do the binder first. Oh, you almost said tin. It's like you didn't well, know. Well, the tin looks more exciting to me. Photo, photo <laughs> album? Looks like a photo album. Let's see. Is it a photo album? It is blank. Well, that's not very exciting. Oh, stamps. Okay. Well, I mean, people buy stamps. That's eight dollars worth of stamps at the end of the day. Oh, there's a British five pound note, and you old US one dollar, an old US five dollar, uh, shin plaster, which is a twenty five cent note. Blank, blank. We got a. Uh, oh, there we go. There's a nineteen thirties uh, Canadian twenty dollar bill. That's worth a little bit of money right there. It's not in the greatest condition. We've got a nineteen uh, fifty four. Um, Queen $10 note. I'm looking to see if it's the devil face. If you look at her hair on the one side, um, people said they saw the face of the devil and they actually had to take it back. There's another, there's her dad. Another uh, Bank of Canada, 1930s $10 note. More blank pages, but look, we've got money. $10 bills, $5 bills. Those really aren't that old. There's some older fives. It's, I think this is a collection of just like somewhat lower denomination currency. But I will check to see if there's any special, like if it's a replacement note or if it's a radar note or a special serial number. Um, radar would be like uh, 9876789, like that. If you have a serial number like that, they're actually worth a lot more. So I will have to check the um, serial numbers on these and see, but there's, I mean, even if I added this up, there's hundreds of dollars worth of just actual money let alone the fact that it's vintage money. Look, pages upon pages of 1954 $2 bills. And then we get into the $1 bills. Pages and pages and pages and pages. And here I thought this was gonna be stamps. Centennial 67 notes. So it doesn't look like a whole lot of this is uncirculated. That one's pretty crisp. Some of these are fairly crisp. So that's a pretty good score. Better than the photo album I thought it was gonna be. I was be. not expecting it to have money in it. Okay. Oh, this one's heavy. Yeah. How can the camera still see it? Uh, yeah, the camera can see it. In fact, the camera can zoom in, and I can tilt so the camera can see even better. There. I think that ought to do it. We mean all of you. We want to make sure that all of you can see it. Okay. What do we have? I'm gonna dump some of this out in the tray. This looks like. It looks like silver dollars, but I don't think it is. No, far from it. These are Klondike dollars from uh, from Klondike days, which is basically just like a fair or a carnival that we do here annually, like this, like the equivalent of what a state fair would be. 
kind of not worth a whole lot. <laughs> uh, let's see, there's this little box. And it has the world's biggest diamond. Uh, yeah. and floating pendant. They, they had either paid or had 20 bucks on it. There's a little uh, keepsake locket. Some of those can be gold, that might be gold. I have to check that for uh, gold. A little rifle tie clip. And again, they, they at one point owned a gun shop, so I can imagine the proprietor of the gun shop wearing that with his tie. Somebody walking in going, gosh, where'd you get that from? That's awfully nice. I don't know why he sounds like that, but he does in my mind. Maybe he whistles when he talks to you. Shay, that's an awfully nice Winchester tie clip. Oh, silver? silver bullion. 480 grains of pure silver. So there's a chunk of silver right there. Um, we've got big 1973. Uh, oh, that is actually a $10. This is solid silver. That's a $10 silver coin. I've had one of those before. They usually sell for over a hundred bucks. So there you go. That's a $10 solid silver coin. They came out for the uh, 73, uh, 76 Olympics. Well, that's weird. It says Canada 73 on the back and Montreal 76 on the front. Well, it's a, it, that, that is silver though. Uh, the little Queen Elizabeth 1977 token. There's some more, um, these are half dollars. So 50 cent pieces. I'm hoping there's gonna be more silver in here. This looks like it's foreign money. This looks like it's English money. And some other random things in here. Yeah, we've got some English and other currency in a sin. I'll keep that together because it looks like it's foreign currency. This has currency. a special on it. Special, special, special. What's so special? 1965 nickels. I don't know. It's, oh, it's all 1960s nickels. Is it? Yeah. I guess the special thing about it is it's old nickels. Well, I mean, there's a lot of coins in here. Pennies. The misconception that all coins have collectability. The truth is they don't. In fact, if you go to uh, many coin dealers, they'll just offer you face value for most old coins you take in, especially if they're circulated. Well, here's a little Royal Bank. That, that's a, a dime keeper. And I think all it was was just, I don't think these are anything special. I think it's just five bucks in dimes. <laughs> oh, well, there's a whole bunch of them at least anyway. I'll double check the dates, but none of these look like they're silver or anything. But hey, at least there's a bunch of dimes. Oh, that's an old one. That's a, let's see. Trying to read that. 1915, Republic of France. One of those big pennies. Yeah. This is a sack of silver dimes and quarters. That's all silver. I can tell just from looking at it. Plus the queen has a ponytail. On our coins, if you see the queen with the ponytail, that's a sign, see there? If that's on a dime or a quarter, it's gonna be silver. Silver content, I should say. It's got a hole in the bag. It's got a hole in the bag. Oh, there's a silver dollar. 1960, 1960 silver dollar. Another bullion, silver bullion. So I'm just kind of uh, skimming through at this point right now. Those are all uh, U.S. wheat pennies. It's a whole thing of like 1940s U.S. wheat pennies. There is a, uh, that's a Churchill, uh, more of like a commemorative token. Old pennies. This is just, oh. Well, there might be some silver in here. I don't know why they'd put jewelry in with this unless it was... Silver. Oil discovered in Leduc, 1946. Imperial oil made a discovery. Oh, I'm holding it off camera. 
I don't know if that's silver though is the thing. The bracelet looks silver. Yeah, and the earrings look silver. Do you want to see if there's a uh, silver mark on that? I don't have a loop, but I'll look with my eyeballs. With your eyeballs. Okay. I think it says sterling. Yeah, it says sterling. Years. That one's sterling, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe these are all, that looks like it's silver. This is actually a nice bracelet with the little engraved flower on it. Is that the, that'd be for a tiny wrist. I guess it expands. Yeah, you, it's adjustable. I'll have to check and see. I think these are all uh, silver bullion, which is good. Or just lots of, uh, kind of a mix of old and new coins mixed in here. So nothing super special, but probably um, a few hundred bucks worth of uh, silver anyway. Okay, bring the box back over and you want to see what's in the fancy red velvety? Uh, yeah. Okay, hang on. Uh, it, it's heavy. It is, oh, well that looks like gold. Or, well, it's gold color. John's, oh no, that is a chunk of gold. No, 0.999 fine gold. It's not very much gold, but oops, I'm holding it off camera. You wonder why I, I don't use a tripod or look at this. I'm too intent on actually looking at the stuff in front of me that I'm not doing a good job showing it to you guys. Those are uh, uh, Johnson Mathy or yeah, Johnson Mathy. So those are, that's gold bullion, just little chunks of it right there. <coughs> gold chain and that looks to be a diamond in the middle. Yeah, I would say that's a diamond. Yeah, usually when it's smaller like that, it's real. It's when you get the really big ones. That's just a uh, Santa Claus quarter, which I don't think there's anything too remarkable about it, but it might, maybe it came out of a mint set, maybe it's silver. Uh, it's Santa. Well, somebody turned it into a, um, they turned it into a pendant. And then this, yeah, every single one of these is solid silver. So we've got a uh, mint proof set of 2008 $5 pure silver coins in its original box. So I don't know, one, two, three, four, that's probably about $500 or more of silver right there. Okay, let's bring the box back over and have a look. Oh, that's a silver plated coaster. Can they see it? Now, that looked like a big giant silver coin. Let's see, Reader's Digest, silver plated. Not really worth a whole lot. My parents used to have those. These are um, rodeo belt buckles. Sometimes these actually are silver, though none of these are, but those are um, collectible on their own just because people do collect these Heston uh, rodeo belt buckles. Let's see, Lanny McDonald dollar. Um, I think that's just like a, uh, I don't think that's any official currency or anything like that. Um, oh, the big bag of cutlery. And if these end up being sterling, you actually have a lot of weight here. Community plate. That's nothing. Do you want to check these over, Melissa? Yeah. Let's we'll see if any of that's actually sterling. So while Melissa's looking through the forks and knives. How did you read that? I have good eyes. I do not. I'm getting it. I'm getting a loop. You're gonna get a loop. These appear to all be stamps. Loose stamps and stamp sets. Superman stamps. So those are stamps. We've got some more forks and knives here. Nickel silver. So low grade. It's like coin silver. You can't cash that in for its silver value, unfortunately. More forks and knives and spoons. I'll give that to the uh, Melissa pile to see if any of that's actual silver. And we've got this box, this magical box. Okay. Well, the box has old lodge regalia, Victorian crown. 
Woo, waka, woo, waka, woo. My Flintstone reference. Bunch of little uh, charms. Somebody's charm bracelet. It says nickel silver. Yeah, nickel silver isn't real. Yeah, it doesn't silver. feel good. That is um, uh, the Empire. King George. So neat. Neat old spoons. But uh, again, I don't think they're going to be real silver. That's okay, though. Oh, there's a watch. Let's see what type of watch is it. This is a Vendome 17 Jewel, so just kind of a low-grade watch. It might be a, a silver, uh, that's a very custom uh, band or bracelet for this thing. So it could very well be a silver bracelet. I think it might be stamped. That's probably why they kept it in the box there. Somebody's military cap badge, one time price of 15 bucks. Oh, there we go. And a belt buckle, military. Some soldiers, some little lead soldiers in there. Schrader. Oh, that's a really old, uh, your, did your loop fall out of your head? Yep. That's a t that was a tire pressure gauge. This is a uh, straight razor. Some badges. And some buttons. Right there. So always interesting to see what's inside somebody's dog tag. Little bits of jewelry and stuff. So, some assorted stuff, you know, a random bullet. There's always a random bullet in a box. Every time I go through a box, there's a bullet in a box. I've never had that happen. Well, you're not going through the right boxes then. <laughs> Royal Canadian Air Cadets. And let's see Hotel Wales International Silver. And what's this say? Royal Visit, 1959, Canada. So that's a commemorative spoon. And again, I believe that's just plated. But some neat things either way. I think the best stuff was definitely, I'm gonna take it off the tripod now. So the best stuff out of this box was probably this, all this old vintage currency, including some uh, quite old 30s currency. And all the silver, silver uh, bullion and coins and stuff that That's came out of it too. I'm going to spend a little more time organizing and sorting what came out of this box. And Melissa is going to see any silver so far. I don't know. Most of it's plate. Plate or nickel silver. Yeah, I found a couple that just have names that doesn't say anything. So sometimes those are silver. Uh, yeah, they'll usually say sterling right on the back of it. I actually did have, and you can see the plating wearing off of that one. But I did have a big um, bucket full of sterling silver um, forks and knives and stuff, a, a set that I took in. And in scrap value, it was $1,100 in scrap because of the weight of silver. And you might say, well, Alex, people could have used that as a fork or a knife. Well, I don't think most people need an $1,100 fork and knife set. Um, there's enough forks and knives floating around. There's a, a lot of, and plus, uh, it takes a lot of polish. People don't usually use these for for what their intended purposes anymore because the amount of uh, chemicals you have to put on to keep it clean. But um, when you find them and they're silver, like if that was a um, solid silver spoon, that's close to probably twenty dollars in silver right there. So you start adding that up. So um, I am not too proud to go and take in. Um, silver for scrap when I need to, unless it's a historically significant piece, but they made thousands and thousands of fork and knife sets and people don't use them anymore for fork and knife sets. So anyway, there you go. So uh, thank you, Melissa, for your sorting oh, that capabilities. Was, finally got to see in the box. Yeah, and um, I guess I'm gonna separate all the good, good stuff off to the side over here. And um, I guess we get it all cleaned up. So thanks for watching today's uh, first mystery treasure box 
my eyes went real big there for a second. Treasure box unboxing. Um, I am gonna finish sorting this, figure out what I got here, and then um, put it all away, get it off to auction before too long, and um, hopefully find some new homes for all this stuff. So guys, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Um, tune in. Uh, we have a really big bin of stuff we're going to go through next. That's going to be the next episode. And we're going to end off with looking through the safes because I think that'll be the most exciting. Because if it was in a lockbox, you'd think it's going to be good. Um, so stay tuned for those episodes. But guys, have a wonderful night. We'll see you all soon and bye.